Tiny House Listings and today I'm going to show you how to turn junk mail, egg cartons, and any other kind of paper waste products into logs that will heat your home for free. Stay tuned. The first problem in my, in my mind with taking this approach to heating your home for free and using scrap paper is that I've seen other people do it online and it's very, very time consuming the process that they take. They build small chambers and cram uh, wet, soggy paper into there and, and form molds and then repeat the process and it's just very time consuming and to the point where it doesn't make any sense. So I've thought about this for days and days and days and probably actually weeks on a way to actually speed up the process and get more bang for your buck and your buck being your time. And this is a process that I've thought of. I've never tried it before so I'm kind of learning with you guys but I'm curious to see how it works out. So here we go. So as you can see here I have a five gallon bucket and I'm going to be drilling holes throughout and later on as we remove water from the paper material this is where the water is going to drain out so uh, stick with me and uh, just kind of follow me and you'll see how everything comes together shortly I'm using a very small bit this is a 3 16th inch and I suspect this will be good because there's these holes are going to be under a lot of pressure and I don't want any of the paper product spewing out the side and if we used a bigger hole I think that's what would happen. So you can see I've drilled holes all along the bottom as well. This will help um, the process of shedding water much quicker. So it's going to sh uh, shed out the sides and out the bottom. If you don't have any five gallon buckets the cheapest place I've found to get these is actually at Home Depot. I paid two dollars and fifty cents each for these but obviously if you already have some or if you know someone that's willing to part with theirs of course that's the best way to go. The next step in the process is to make sure you have a second bucket with no holes in it. Then you'll take the bucket that you just drilled all the holes in, slide it in there. On the inside bucket I've drilled holes about three-fourths of the way up um, and making sure that I don't go any higher than this. As long as you stay underneath this lid or quite a few inches below it I think you'll be okay. And so the next step is to fill this up with the paper that you've been saving or just keep this set up just like this outside or anywhere you, you have room and just throw paper in it as you go. What's great about this approach is not only can you use paper products that are wasted that you would normally throw in the uh, trash or recycle, um, what you can do is you can use grass clippings, you can use leaves that are around your yard, uh, real small fine uh, twigs that have been chipped up, that type of thing, any kind of biomass that's small can be broken down can be used as well. Now that the bucket's almost full, I'm filling it full of water. So anyone who's familiar with this process or has seen other people do it online, um, you'll notice that there's a lot of transferring of the material into small cylindrical tubes or other um, forms that will that you can use to make your, uh, well I think they call them paper briquettes, but we're making paper logs. As you can maybe already have noticed so far, the cool thing about this process is that there's really no transferring. It all gets done right here in one spot. And since we're using about four gallons of water, this approach will allow us to save the majority of that water and use it in the future so we won't be uh, wasting water, we can conserve it. Well, I've had the paper sitting in the water overnight and now it's time to blend it up. And uh, so th this right here helps, the, f the tool that we're using that I built, which is this old uh, uh, circular saw blade that I, uh, welded, that I welded to a, um, just an old piece of steel that I had and I put it into these, this um, electric drill that I have and, and I bent the sides in to give it more of a blending action and what this tool does is allow us not to have to waste the time of shredding each and every single piece of paper which if you've, if you've seen this process before people put it through the shredder then put, do all this other stuff and like I said before I think the main thing to do in this process is just saving time and what we're doing here with these five gallon buckets we could have 10, 15, 20 of those going on at any given time so I'm going to show you how this thing works here in a second. Um, it works pretty good. <laughs> Let's, let me show you how it works. And now just using this drill just for a little bit, as you can see I'd already uh, played around with it before I started shooting the video. I'd already mulched it up a little bit. But the overall it takes about 20, probably about 20 seconds and it's now it's a pulpy, muddy type of consistency and that's exactly what you want for making these paper logs. 
Now that we have all the paper and everything mulched up and ready to go, the next thing we need is something to press down to squeeze all the additional water out. And that's the next project. That's what we're about to do. This is a very thick, already cut piece of wood that I got from the um, discount section of Home Depot for 70% off. It's a huge board and I can make several of these presses over the lifespan of it. I think it was like three bucks and it's super thick so it'll last a long time and it's pressure treated. And um, so you'll see what we use it for here in a second. Now the next step is to let this drain so we can reuse the same water. Or at least most of it. <laughs> Alright, I've let it drain a little bit. The majority of the water is already down below it, so now I'll just take our press that we just made. Push it down. And now you can take the bucket with the water in it, set it on top, and have a seat. There you have it, paper log. This thing will burn for hours and hours. One thing you could do is if you have a, a machete or a long blade, you could slice it into quarters to make it dry faster and to catch on fire a little bit easier. The thing about this log is you're gonna have a, already have to have a fire started to get it going, otherwise it'll just smolder. And now these two buckets are ready for some more action. Just put that in there. Already got your water. Start throwing in the next amount of paper and repeat the process. Now that I've got this system in place, as I walk from the mailbox and there's junk mail in there, I, as I go by, I just throw it in. So a couple lessons learned while doing this project. Um, the first thing I noticed is that if you don't do this, this process during the summer when it's very hot and you have access to a lot of sun, uh, this, these logs can take a very long time to dry because they're thick and they just need hot uh, dry places to, 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 uh, for the water to go away. So if you have a greenhouse, that's actually uh, the best case scenario or if you have somewhere where you can stay uh, out of the the rain and stay dry but also get access to lots of sun then it'll dry as well but overall I say it's definitely worth it to, to do this if, if you have the area and the space in your yard to uh, take on such a project and then you'll have free fuel for life so thanks for watching see you in the next video